next on HBO. Of the terror of remind to unbilling of Closer Village after the animals are eating alive from everyone. Pet Cemetery. Next on HBO. It's time to learn from the expert. That's just outrageous. It's the new season of Real Time with Bill Maher. Hollywood won't turn your daughter into a nymphomaniac or get her hooked on drugs. I will. Ah, come on, Bill. What the racist? What, 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 what is a red herring question? Is that? <laughs> 15% of Americans answer their phones during sex, which is dangerous because it interferes with your driving. So if I want to come on this show again, I have to choose between you and eternal damnation. So. Uh, choose me, babe. Real Time with Bill Maher. Every Friday night at 11. Come on to my house, my house. I'm going to give you candy. Come on to my house, in my house, I'm gonna give you apple plum and I forgot to do it. Come on to my house, in my house, I'm gonna give you everything. Come on to my house. Our beloved Republic is in the hands of madmen. Lie yourself with us and his strength will wither away. You cannot stay. I can do as I wish. The tide turns already. You'll never see your husband now. The gods have abandoned Rome. I want him dead. And that you shall have. Look here, Mars. I am Titus Pullo. These bloody men might give to you. you'd like to speak to. Shall I be merciful? I think not. Rated R. Next on HBO. Go behind the scenes for the animated film of creators of Shrek and featuring the voice of Will Smith and Robert De Niro. The making of Shark Tale. Next on HBO. A new comedy series. Premiere Sunday, September 25th. Looking back on it now, dying was the best thing that ever happened to me. All my life, I felt powerless. I've never stood up for myself. But then... I don't need to ask anyone anything. 
I'm not taking orders from you. It's coming. It's going to fall 100 miles an hour! We gotta cover the engine! We just need him more time! Flight of the bees. Can we finish the airplane? Welcome to my crib. The good life, the way the other half lives. Because <laughs> even a superstar Mac Daddy fish like me has to have the basic necessities. Yeah, like money. <laughs> hey, come on, shorties. Why y'all messing with my fantasy? Fantasy comes to life in the fishified world of DreamWorks Animation's Shark Tale. <laughs> I brought you some breakfast. <gasps> You didn't. Mm hmm. Kelby Creams? Your favorite. We spent a lot of time at the beginning trying to imagine what a unique underwater fantasy world would look like. We wanted to have icons that were recognizable um, from the everyday human world, but make it all fishified. One of the biggest challenges right off the bat was what is this world going to look like? Because it was a fantasy world. There's kind of two looks to the film, which was really difficult to try to combine. There's the mob world. And then there's the hip-hop world. So that was really tough because the mob world has a very muted tone to it. It's got deep mahoganies, it's got rich browns, it's got black and white, which the sharks lend themselves completely to this world. I got some news. <laughs> then you've got the hip-hop neighborhood, which we needed to relate to the Coral Reef City, which is much more colorful. You know, much more primary colors, much more fun, playful. Oh, give me that. Give me some fish. I give fin. me some fish. Low fin. <laughs> a traffic scene is a, in the middle of Times Square is, is a real easy way to see how we were fishifying something familiar. You know, you can imagine if you're in Times Square and it's it's busy lunch hour and there's cabs everywhere. Don't you yell at me. My mother is your mother, okay? Ugh. We've accomplished, I think, a very unique look in animated films, something that we haven't seen before. Uh, we've taken ideas of the undersea, and instead of trying to make it just natural, but taking reality and amping it up, and really sort of over-exaggerating it, and mixing it with a very artistic style. And here comes Lucky Day! I suppose each animated film has its own color or texture to it, but this one has something very vibrant about it, and, and because of maybe the water and everything else, it moves, and it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch. But it's just neat, every little thing that they've thought of, to, to change everything to fish and fish references. I think they must be going insane, everybody who's working on this. I love <laughs> it, man. Lenny, whoa, hold up. <laughs> when you're looking at our fish, if you kind of look closely, then remember what like Martin Scorsese looks like, or Will Smith, or Angelina Jolie, you'll see their facial qualities in there real subtly. I think all the actors were real excited when they saw the fish patterned after themselves. When they called and said, hey, you want to be a fish? <laughs> Yes, I want to be a fish so much, you have no idea. It's weird, but I actually, I think I'm more comfortable watching me as a fish than watching my own face. <laughs> They've captured my essence with the character of Lenny. I think they went overboard with the pot belly. And uh, I'm going to have a, a, a strict talking to the artist team about trimming that down. <laughs> Animators have a way of bringing the character, the, the actor's personality in, into a character, but it was really fun that our, our designs actually helped support that. It's almost caricature of the people who, are, who have been cast uh, in, in the film, uh, caricatures in a way which come to life. I think people will still see a little bit of, of Will Smith in, in Oscar, and, and for me, it's just the best. Pass sides! <laughs> My brother from another mother, uh! With the daisy, baby, uh, show me that. Come on, come on, work, work that. Let me see that. I mean, uh, uh, come on, come on, dude. It's all gravy up in there, baby. Now snap your fin right on the snap it. Oscar. You're not snapping it. Oscar. Oscar. Oh, oh, hey, don't sweat it, Sykes. A lot of white fish can't do it. Shark tail. Next on HBO. In this western of becoming in this wild rage of the wrong road at the wrong side, Kevin Costner, Dennis Quaid, and Gene Hackman star in 
quiet earth. Next on HBO. I've seen what they do. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident. And everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. What was that? PG-13. Next on HBO. Haven't you heard the man of the world getting second chance with Ian New Woman changes her new way of the first, Jamie Foxx, breaking all the rules? Next on HBO. I've seen what they do. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident. And everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. What was that? Coming for us, though, right? What kind of odds do you give us? No radio, very little water. If we try to walk out of here, there's no one at all. I'm in charge, and I don't need to ask anyone anything. I'm not taking orders from you. It's coming. It's going to fall at 100 miles an hour. We gotta cover the engine. Flight of the bees. Can we finish the airplane? Say please. Looking back on it now, dying was the best thing that ever happened to me. All my life, I felt powerless. I've never stood up for myself. But then... A new comedy series. Premiere Sunday, September 25th. It's time to learn. 
learn from the expert. That's just outrageous. It's the new season of Real Time with Bill Maher. Hollywood won't turn your daughter into a nymphomaniac or get her hooked on drugs. I will. Ah! Come on, Bill. Who are the rich? Who are the, the rich? What the red you said, herring you question is that? Said. 15% of Americans answer their phones during sex, which is dangerous because it interferes with your driving. <laughs> so if I want to come on this show again, I have to choose between you and eternal damnation. So. Uh, choose me, babe. <laughs> Real Time with Bill Maher. Every Friday night at 11. Tonight, it's on HBO. At 8, a new movie every Saturday night. A terror strongs to kill. Mila Jovovich. Resident Evil Apocalypse. At 9.45, Legend Begins of Every Side, the HBO original series. Rome. And at 10.45, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Face Off. Resident Evil Apocalypse. Rome. And Face Off. HBO is on tonight. Stepping down. Can you believe that? What? Junior's taking over, man. The king's dead. Yeah, what a way to let us know. Yeah, tell me about it. New York is putting them in charge of both magazines. Consolidation, I tell you. Sales is tight, but there could be some layoffs in editorial, so you better watch your ass. Mr. Gascon would like to see you. Mr. Gascon Jr., that is. 
next on HBO. Tackle to the team in this sports center and the middle of the highways and the offside all together in this west side in this inside the NFL. Next on HBO. You have 30 days to pay off your mortgage or you lose your gym. Who'd want to buy this place anyway? Here at Globo Gym, we're better than you. And we know it. You can't just let Globo Gym take us over. If there was any way in the world we could raise $50,000, we could play basketball. You gotta get angry. I guess I'm not really an angry person. <laughs> Are you angry now? Welcome to this year's Las Vegas Dodgeball Open. You should quit now. I think I'll take my chances in the tournament. Yeah, you will take your chances. That's why you're set. That's what I'm saying to you. All right? Touche. Vince Vaughn. You guys suck! Thank you. Nice, nice to be in Vegas. Ben Stiller. We should meet. What? I said we should date. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Premieres Saturday, October 1st on HBO. A new comedy series. Premier Sunday, September 25th. It's time to learn from the expert. That's just outrageous. It's the new season of Real Time with Bill Maher. Hollywood won't turn your daughter into a nymphomaniac or get her hooked on drugs. I will. Ah, come on, Bill. What the rich? What are the rich? What are the red herring question is that? 15% of Americans answer their phones during sex, which is dangerous because it interferes with your driving. <laughs> so if I want to come on this show again, I have to choose between you and eternal damnation. So. Uh, choose me, babe. <laughs> Real Time with Bill Maher. Every Friday night at 11. I've seen what they do. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident. Everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. What was that? Last looks, please. So we got the top of the risers now, so no, no, we don't have Exhilarating, hard hitting, unbeatable. HBO Sports. And now, the HBO Sports presentation inside the NFL. Next on HBO. In this documentary film about the Beeslan school that children lived in this, who were held prisoner in the incident with other way. Children of Beslan. Next on HBO. Si vos estás buscando trabajo, de pronto yo te puedo ayudar a conseguir un camellito. Es un camello que es viajante. Viajando. Es un trabajo de mula. ¿Y usted cuántas veces ha hecho esto? Dos. ¿Y cómo le fue? Aquí estoy. Excuse me, Mr. President. 
history of the situation. We have a uh, reliable report that someone is negotiating to buy one or more Russian tactical nukes. Anything else I should know? May already have happened. There are lots of people in the world with the skills to build it. Almost anyone can detonate it. So Al-Qaeda is a nuclear power. You're telling us that we virtually have no way to stop a bomb from coming into this country. I can't guarantee my people will find it before it goes off. Hell, sir, the weapons could be anywhere. Tell no one about this until we're sure what's going on. Not even your family. I don't know how many there are, where they are, or what I can do to stop them. If they have a warrior, we probably can't find them. regular sex a man can have an orgasm in like 30 seconds but if it's oral sex it's like five and a half hours stop saying i'm coming i'm coming armageddon is coming you are never ever don't miss an all-new one night stand with caroline ray friday at midnight with an encore tuesday night at 11 you have 30 days to pay off your mortgage or you lose your gym who'd want to buy this place anyway here at Globo Gym, we're better than you. And we know it. We can't just let Globo Gym take us over. If there was any way in the world we could raise $50,000, we could play basketball. You gotta get angry. I guess I'm not really an angry person. <laughs> Are you angry now? Welcome to this year's Las Vegas Dodgeball Open. You should quit now. I think I'll take my chances in the tournament. Yeah, you will take your chances. That's why you're set. That's what I'm saying to you. All right? Touche. Vince Vaughn. You guys suck! Thank you. Nice, nice to be in Vegas. Ben Stiller. We should meet. What? I said we should date. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Premieres Saturday, October 1st on HBO. Tonight, it's on HBO. At 8, a new movie every Saturday night. A terror strongs to kill. Mila Jovovich. Resident Evil Apocalypse. At 9.45, Legend Begins of Every Side, the HBO original series. Rome. And at 10.45, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Face Off. Resident Evil Apocalypse. Rome. And Face Off. HBO is on tonight. Next on HBO. They're broad-shouldered, they're well-tailored, they wear shades, and they mean business. Tommy Lee Jones, Will Smith, Men in Black. Next on HBO. On the next One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Isn't it amazing that during regular sex, a man can have an orgasm in like 30 seconds, but if it's oral sex, it's like five and a half hours. Stop saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. Armageddon is coming. You are never. Ever. 
Don't miss an all-new one-night stand with Caroline Ray. Friday at midnight with an encore Tuesday night at 11. You have 30 days to pay off your mortgage or you lose your gym. Who'd want to buy this place anyway? Here at Globo Gym, we're better than you. And we know it. You can't just let Globo Gym take us over. If there was any way in the world we could raise $50,000, we could play basketball. You gotta get angry. I guess I'm not really an angry person. <laughs> Are you angry now? Welcome to this year's Las Vegas Dodgeball Open. You should quit now. Think I'll take my chances in the tournament. Yeah, you will take your chances. That's why you said. That's what I'm saying to you. All right? Touche. Vince Vaughn. You guys suck! Thank you. Nice, nice to be in Vegas. Ben Stiller. We should meet. What? I said we should date. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Premieres Saturday, October 1st on HBO. It's time to learn from the expert. That's just outrageous. It's the new season of Real Time with Bill Maher. Hollywood won't turn your daughter into a nymphomaniac or get her hooked on drugs. I will. Ah! Come on, Bill. What are the, what are the, what are the, what are the red herring <laughs> question is that? <laughs> 15% of Americans answer this on during sex, which is dangerous because it interferes with your driving. <laughs> so if I want to come on this show again, I have to choose between you and eternal damnation. So. Uh, choose me, babe. <laughs> Real time with Bill Maher. Every Friday night at 11. Tonight, it's on HBO. At 8, a new movie every Saturday night. A terror strongs to kill. Mila Jovovich. Resident Evil Apocalypse. At 9.45, Legend Begins of Every Side, the HBO original series. Rome. And at 10.45, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Face Off. Resident Evil Apocalypse. Rome. And Face Off. HBO is on tonight.
damn bugs. Next on HBO. A behind the scenes of the Diller drama about the family who kept the violence and starring Viggo Mortensen. HBO First Look, A History of Violence. Next on HBO. She doesn't mean anything to me. You're the only woman that means anything to me. You're the only woman that matters. Hold on a second, Ma. Can I help you guys? Uh, uh, what are you talking into? A phone? It, it doesn't have any wires. Here's yanking my chain. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. I didn't even know you had a chain. Me too. Yeah. Hey, Jer. Hi, Doris. You know these guys? Uh. Yeah, I met them today. Okay. Enjoy them. Hey, Ma. No, a bunch of whack. Deborah, you're going to lose your husband. And you will never find someone as good. That's it. Oh! Good morning! Hey! John Klasky is a loving father. You don't have to get up yet, but are you thinking seriously about it? Yeah. Okay. A world-class chef. Don't even know what to root for. Hi! I didn't know Deb found somebody. You gonna help out with the house and the kids? Solo español. You work here and you don't speak any English at all. Our beloved Republic is in the hands of madmen. Ally yourself with us and your strength will wither away. You cannot stay. turns already. You'll never see your husband now. The gods have abandoned Rome. I want him dead. And that you shall have. Look here, Mars. I'm Titus Pullo. These bloody men might give to you. I'll give you a moment of the gods you'd like to speak to. de pronto yo te puedo ayudar a conseguir un camellito. Es un camello que es viajante. Viajando. Es un trabajo de mula. ¿Y usted cuántas veces ha hecho esto? Dos. ¿Y cómo le fue? Aquí estoy. I've seen what they do. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident, and everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. <laughs> What was
family. Action! Three, two, one, go! When I read this script by Josh Olson, I thought, well, this is mainstream, but it has some very disturbing undercurrents, and I thought if the studio was willing to go where I wanted to take it, I thought it could be really quite good. You know, this may be a fairly normal revenge and retribution script, but he can bring something to it. It'll be something else. It'll be better. If you really put a gun to my head, I would say in some very broad ways, this ties in thematically with his interests. It stays within that range of ideas of people being sort of pushed to extremes emotionally and notions of identity. And some of the movies that he's done are more of a physical transformation into a different identity. This one's an internal struggle. I think that all his stories allow us to look at things that are uncomfortable to deal with. You know, he entertains you first and foremost, but secondly, he says, consider this. The movie opens with myself and Steve McCaddy, who plays Leland, my, um, my partner. Billy is his, um, his cousin. Or cousin, no, his nephew, actually. Leland got out of prison about a year and a half ago and went down to visit the family and hooked up with Billy and decided he should show him the world. Sort of like a tutoring thing. I think you might well uh, find yourself slipping a bit in the blood. You're sticking on your boots. You like your boots. I like my boots boots are nice boots. <laughs> So. A lot of directors are completely prepared before they get to set. They've got storyboards and they've rehearsed everything and, and they get there and it's kind of that Hitchcock model where he almost doesn't have to show up, everything's ready to go and, and you can achieve greatness doing that. Um, David's got a very different approach. He doesn't storyboard and he doesn't rehearse with the actors until he gets there. And then he starts feeling it out. He'll block the scene, he'll have them walk through it and see what works for them and then he'll start designing his shots around them. Guy. Go this way. We let him get away from us. We see him steal a root beer, which is his worst crime. So we're loose, and then we go down to the cart. And we follow the cart across, and that shows us that there's somebody else dead there. And probably that could be a cut right yeah, there. Yeah, it feels like it should be definitely one in such a way. That's, yeah, it does occur. I had always assumed from looking at those films and how beautifully they're put together and composed and, and how deliberate sometimes they seem that you know, these don't feel like movies that were, that were you know, designed on the day of shooting. Mm, I don't make decisions on exactly on the fly. I have to have some general thoughts in my mind about what I'm going to do. But it's true that I, I improvise on the day as anybody would. Would you like to look at it once on this lens? Okay. I, uh, it's yeah. not because I have problems. Yeah, yeah, no. no I, I have lighting problems with yeah. the other lens. Yeah. So, so. Okay, let's back. What's more? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I agree. Well, David's movies, some people might think of effects and blood. Multiple stab wounds in the chest. Throat cut. Your left arm, put it back. You can see your throat better. Yeah. It's never gratuitous, you know, for like, just for the sake of like splatter, like zombie movies or something like that. You know, there's a reason for it. It has its place in the picture. His preoccupations have shifted over the last few years. He's more interested with what's going on underneath the surface of the so characters. maybe as you come by, there's something you can reach for. You find your hand and come back, I'm not sure what. Let's think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you ring the bell, I don't know. Yeah, you know? Maybe, so you just, just, maybe you just do that. Get the bell, it will bring it closer. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Which would alert the little girl, you know, as well. Right. Often yeah. actors are worried about small, fussy, detailed things, which in the hysteria and the pressure of production, a director might say, well, I can't worry about that now, or it's not important, or no one will notice, or whatever. Roll, roll in. Eight, nine, take seven. I try very hard to set the production up so that there isn't that hysteria, that I do have time and space and a crew that understands, including very much a director of photography, 
that these details do matter. Action! There's a lot of play involved in the creative act. We're grown-ups, but we are putting on funny mustaches and hats and calling each other by fake names and pretending to be somebody else. Of course, there's a lot of money, there's uh, egos, there's reputations, there's pressure. But at the same time, you're playing, and you, you can't lose sight of that. I wanted to play Billy because he's a bit of a psychopath, really. He does bad things to people. Keep your finger to your lips, and then slowly it comes up. In my real life, I have to be very good, so when yeah, I get the chance to be bad, I have fun doing it. And then he shoots you. But you, 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 you don't really shoot. There's something different about looking into a little girl's eyes than if someone else was standing in or if you're just looking at a piece of tape on a wall or whatever. Billy and Leland have done terrible things, but I think this is something new for him. I think he's never killed a little kid before, and uh, I kind of wanted to know what that would feel like. Hey, Mark. And now that's set. There are certain actors that I might admire on the screen, but they don't attract me in terms of saying, but I really want to work with this person. I need a kind of eccentricity or, or something that's just off, more typical of a character actor than a leading man, let's say, and yet still has a leading man presence and charisma. Vigo was very deliberate and thoughtful before he chose to do this movie. I met with David a number of times. He really wanted to understand the script. He wanted to understand the ending and the transformation. And it was really about him kind of falling in love with this character before he decided to do it. And he's really kind of blanketed himself with the reality of what Tom's life and what Joey's life would be like. In terms of the way he approaches acting, I've never met, nor has Carol Spear, my production designer, met an actor who bought things for the set, you know, did, was doing set decorating. He would go away for the weekend and he'd visit his parents or whatever, and he'd come back with little trinkets. Of, I've been thinking about this and I thought Tom would have this, and he brought the fishing money. And it lived right by the cash register in the diner. On my trips there, I would get things that I knew were particular to U.S. culture, U.S. society. A lot of the symbols that we accept as normal that have to do with guns and extreme elements of hunting are very aggressive. It was interesting just, just finding these things in, in different stores and like that and looking at them, whether Carol would use them or not. It didn't really matter. I would have them in my dressing room. The set that Carol built, it was a beautiful job of art direction and construction and sort of movie magic. You get jaded, but you forget the magic of cinema, that you can actually build something. If you go walk down the street in Millbrook, Pick some garbage up at the, at the door of his diner. We cut inside the diner. He walks in and has a dialogue scene. You can see the shops and the people and the cars outside. But the interior is all built here. It's the simplest thing I do, is to cut from an exterior in Millbrook to an interior on the stage here. You shoot, then he's down on the floor. So you lean out like, you don't lean up, but your you then goes and out like that, all right? And then you open yourself to the camera. Okay. This was my first squibbed dramatic fly through glass, cool death. Brass plate, special rubber, small little explosive called a squid. Stick that in there. And these condoms full of blood. And you put that over top of the explosive. And you take this whole thing. This goes under the shirt. Fires off, and a little explosion goes. We get a hole. Blood comes pouring out. Cut. Pretty good. Cut. Want to put the glass in? Yes. At first, they were going to have a double that they had lined up, and and as I was just looking the way that they were setting the shot up, I mean, it's a better shot if you actually see me go through the glass, and I'd have to cut around it. So I offered up my body. And also, I mean, how many times in life do you get to fly through a pane of glass? Speak. Set. Set. Action. Set. 
silicone. Looks like real glass. Uh-huh. Except it's rubber. And what are you going to use it for? Throwing it at the actor. When you consider the lives that most people in the world live, they're visited by violence very often. For us, it's sort of a traumatic event that we don't necessarily expect to find in our lives. We're very favored to be able to live that way, but the truth is that violence as a way of life is is pretty common on Earth right now. So artistically, you feel it's something you have to come to terms with and hope that, that you'll deal with it in your creative life and not have to deal with it in your actual day-to-day life. If there's a way that you can really do a cross-the-face smash with it and have it break and get a small amount of coffee and go flying, maybe this is something that has to be done digitally. That's me. Action! Cut. You alright? Yeah, I'm great. I think that violence is an unfortunate but very real and unavoidable part of human existence. You can't really say that it's never justified. Uh, You can say that it's never very attractive, though. It's not glamorizers, you know, slow motion and blood flying through the air. Would you invite your gun to say blam? Seriously. Okay, say blam. And and, and do do a bit of a jerk. Yeah, but I didn't have to do it for your son. Yeah. Because we can't see him. It was about real brutality, the kind of violence that uh, you would actually see in a street fight, for example, it's kind of ungainly and not too graceful and very bloody. Action. Yes, sir! Fuck it! Do her! Yeah! I lost my knife. Go ahead, stab me in here. Okay. Yeah! Ah! Have I had a rough day today? Yeah. What happened to me today? I got shot. And my jaw flew off. And it hung down my neck. It was gruesome. They stick it on my face for about three hours. For that particular scene, I even made like a little rubber tongue for him so he can just like, you know, shoot it out. And then I was lying in a pool of blood. Action. I don't know why he deserved that. Part of what the movie is, is how the violence and the extreme violence that takes place in this town that's not used to something like that affects everybody. When Tom kills the two guys coming to the diner, they're going to kill everybody there. No question that he's justified in his self-defense, but I also think there's no question that uh, even without the character of Joey lurking within him, there's a huge cost to whoever does these things. You know, what happens to you when you do that, and what happens to the people around you when you're sort of an ordinary American household? You know, you see Tom Stahl having this situation thrust upon him, in which he reacts instinctively, so violence ensues, but he's congratulated for committing these acts of violence. In fact, he becomes, you know, a small-town hero. I was scared. Those, uh, those men, they were going to kill us. There was no doubt. You could see it in their eyes. And then Tom saved us. Tom's a hero. The fact that in the United States, violence is celebrated, it tells you that as a society, we have a long way to go. And we sort of become inured to violence because it's just relentless. It's constant. So you're never really allowed to take a break and think about what just happened. I'm sorry, do you think we know each other? You tell me. My character feels that he was done a severe injustice some years ago, and he's coming out to uh, set things right. Eye for an eye, as far as he's concerned. This man is not just casually noticing that perhaps this is somebody from his own past. He has a vendetta. And he has to be scary, he has to be real, and he has to suggest a whole past without verbalizing it. How long does it take to put the scar on? It's an hour and a quarter. An hour and a quarter. There's a lot of life underneath what's going on here for my character in terms of the past and the history. And he's in the position of power. 
because he knows the truth. And so he carries that with him. That position of power, if you will, is an enjoyable place to operate from because you, you got the guy on the spot big time. We all lie to ourselves and the people around us. You know, some in very small ways, some in very large ways. I mean, Tom is telling some huge lies, but what's fascinating about his character is that they've become true. He doesn't even recognize these guys. And he takes it off for a purpose. His purpose is my fucking eye, dumbass. It's not just a scar and a, and a milky eye that's going to make a character be scary. Just Ed's body language and the way he uses his voice. And he has disdain for Tom Stahl's wife because she doesn't know Sarah? what she's involved in, and yet she's very feisty and angry with him, and he expresses it with a kind of scary humor. And it scares her, and it should scare the audience as well. He really pushed me in a really exciting way. We were doing this scene in the mall one day, and it was my first scene with him. Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Stahl. I've been watching over him. You stay the fuck away from my family, son. Bitch. There is no need to use that kind of language, Mrs. Stoyle. You know, we're doing the scene, we're kind of working it out, and, and I was kind of all over the place, and it's my close-up, and he's sitting on the bench, and he looks up at me, staying in his character, he goes, I don't believe a word you're saying. Mr. Fogarty, if you... Can I tell you something before you go on here? Yeah. I'm trying to help you out here. You understand me? I'm trying to make you understand something. You're living with somebody who's not who he says he is. I hear what you're saying. No, you don't. I hear what you're saying. No, you don't. And instead of getting defensive and going, what do you mean? I stayed in my character and I just gave him my next line. If I see you within 500 feet of me or my children or my husband, I'll have you arrested. Can I possibly make myself any clearer no, than that? No, Mrs. Stahl. You good, good, good. Hey, Mrs. Stahl. Don't forget your shoes. So he was kind of directing me within the scene, and the scene became something really dynamic because he wasn't afraid to call me out on something. And, you know, I thanked him so much for showing up for me. Action! When Fogarty comes to our house and has our son with him, I'm like a mother lioness. I just want to kill the guy. I'll do anything to protect my son. Jeff! Mom! Don't make us hurt the kid, Joey. I feel like that workout was really the, convincing. The, Yankees, uh, last, uh, the way we came out? No. <laughs> when you told me to leave. Get tickets. Yeah. And you got great seats. You look scary. <laughs> I mean, okay. Cute. cute. It's scary. It really becomes a family conflict then. From the moment that Jack sees Tom, my father, interact with Fogarty and his men, I think he just really puts into question, you know, who is my father and, and what is his past? You know, what is his history? And I run upstairs after he lets our son go and I look out the window and I not only see my husband kill a guy, I see him devastate a guy. <gasps> so brutally that I know in that instant, I don't know who this person is. I mean, it's really disgusting what he does to this man. That looked real, didn't it? Do it? Watch if I can do that for a Oh, ooh, hurt. Yeah. The Charlie thing, basically, they're going to have to shoot like in the three stages of makeup. Yeah. One with no prosthetic until the first hit, like a little bit of blood through the nose. Yeah, so just if it is a, as though this ripped here. Okay. Yeah. Action. Cat, <laughs> play that back, please. Well, that, that looked good, that first one. Second one is the prosthetic that I showed you the photograph like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then the third one is the really crushed one with the green nose. Yeah. I have the prosthetic makeup's done, and I have the green face with the mashed up nose in the middle. Set. Action. The green screen head will be shot in front of a green screen backing. To make it simple, because the best way is always to keep it simple, is with a syringe, with pressure in the syringe, 
we're blowing that through a blood system in the back, which goes to four selected holes that Stefan had chosen where the blood will spray out from, as if the bone in his nose had broken right up through to his skull. On that David Cronenberg movie, you know, it's not going to be just any other movie. It's what we call cinéma d'auteur, you know, and he's definitely an auteur. He has to move, take a step towards the car doors. I know David makes his films his way and that he's autonomous to a certain extent. It really makes a difference when you're working with somebody who's calling their own, his own shots, who's responsible for the final cut, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Action! You won't need your toothbrush. Not that you can't come up with stuff, not that he doesn't listen to new ideas, no, not that he's not a collaborator, but ultimately it's his film and everybody understands that. But it doesn't matter if I agree or not with his take on it, I know he's got a point of view about it. And if David hadn't been directing the movie and they asked me to be in it, I probably would have said no. The difficulty in this film is, was trying to get things that I liked, that I felt were suited for the character, but at the same time, that I could get multiples of. It's really hard because you can't just pick something because you think that artistically it's right. You have to pick it because you can get six of everything, which you generally get if there's shooting. We shoot him six times tomorrow, which is these six right here. And this is Ed you're talking This is about? Ed Harris, yeah. It's Fogarty. And hopefully all of this stuff will be enough to shoot the poor man 12 times. And then Frank, on Tuesday, gets shot twice, I think. And then over here is Charlie. Charlie gets whanked in the nose like this, apparently, and spews large quantities of blood out of his mouth. So Denise is getting two or three more of these. It's a lovely blood color. So he dies, he dies, he dies, he dies. Everybody dies on, uh, between tomorrow and Tuesday. I'm really glad you killed those guys. You know, when I was 17... I had to drive all the way up from Philly with those two guys. I can imagine. So you don't mind? Well, three against one, you did pretty good. You got two of them. You shoot better since you lost that eye. You should thank me. Yeah, you did probably. Ego and Ed actually worked out a backstory, which was something that was never necessary for anyone else to know, but they knew what their history was. And it had to do with when Joey came to Fargety's house and his wife was upstairs and, you know, and there, there, was, a, there was violence and then she came downstairs. You know, they, they had it all worked out in great detail. Okay, this is an empty gun, guys. Thank you. Okay. It's full of emptiness. It's kind of a perverse twist on it, the classic wrong man scenario. You know, we play it completely straight yeah. throughout. There's that pivotal moment, I should have killed you in Philly. And it's like, oh, now you know. It's like, oh, wow, this is our guy. And uh, I think that's something David really likes to do, is to screw with our sense of who a character is and what they're about. You got anything to say before I kill you, you miserable prick? Should have killed you back in Philly. Go right away, please, guys. Right away. Working with such a talented cast uh, for my first feature film, hot, I really tried to just soak it up and, and watch them. I, you know, I've come down to the set a few times when I wasn't working just so I could watch some of their takes and study their craft. In doing so, I'm also constantly pinching myself because I'm standing across, the, you know, the, the set from Ed Harris. Is everyone ready? Camera's ready. Good. Gary, go hot. Three, two, one. Fight! How'd it feel, Ashton? <laughs> That's awfully good. Is there any value to that? <laughs> <laughs> I got a story. I got a story to tell some people. Thank you all for welcoming me and being so nice. I appreciate it very much. Have a great rest of the shoot. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 Tell me the truth. The easiest thing to do with this movie is play more with the is he or is he not this guy. And that the overriding kind of surfacey tension of the movie, but the, the character stuff, the meat of the movie is really what's going on with Tom and what's going on yeah, with Edie as they struggle through their relationship. I like this idea of, and, and tell me what you think about this at the end when I go over there, I'm just having those thoughts now. Oh my God, oh my God, my whole life is a sham. Yeah. 
you know, David's scripts are really lean because he is interested in the actors filling things out. In a sense, they are the custodians of their own characters. They protect those characters. They want to make them integrated and whole. And you as a director really should listen to that. You really should not move them around like pawns on a chessboard. You should allow them to be alive and to collaborate with you. And you know, from this point on, I feel like I can, you know, barely stand up, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. You know, so here, more, yeah. you know, here, but not just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I don't have it together, and that's why I go there, right? Yeah. Let me be honest, when I first read the script, I thought, ah, supportive wife. And then I read it again, and I started to find some things in her that she was more of the man in this family than Tom was. Then when it changes, she kind of is forced back into this feminine, receptive, vulnerable place. And as soon as I found that shift, I started to look at it differently. Oh, this killer that Fogarty warned me about. I walk in, and it's the first time I confront him. And when I actually hear the words that he's not this person, it's like a physical thing takes over my being, and I just run to the bathroom and puke. Maria had a really nice idea of going into the bathroom just for a, a second and then coming back out. And we don't need much, obviously. How much time do you have? Because uh, that, that's quite enough. Yeah. 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 Peter's so slow that you've got hours. <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise because it was not in the script. We had an extra door on the set, but which was mainly for crew access. Uh, so that they wouldn't be stuck with one door to get into a set. So all of a sudden, she's running out the door, and unfortunately, it's the sound man or something. <laughs> He's not really slow, but he can tell you how long it We were running around frantically looking for extra flats, and luckily we had a couple of extra sinks and toilets, which we were able to get into the set on time. But it was an uh, instant set. And with David, you don't just build a corner of the set. You like to give him the whole thing, because you don't know what's going to happen. It's very interesting in a scene like that not to play into the other actor's energy, not to make it about Tom, but to keep in your own character's energy because it's really traumatic. What are you? <gasps> Some kind of multiple personality schizoid. There's an anger there, but it's not just an anger with the person who in some way has deceived you or disappointed huh. you. You're also angry at yourself for falling for it. Jack's name? Sarah's name? Stahl? Tom Stahl? Did you just make that up? And let's clear the lights for now, guys, until we find the shot. We very rarely talk about visualization because we both like to discover that as we get close to the movie and see the different elements that go in front of the camera. I might even manage it without taking the board out. If it had come up with a formula to say, oh, let's put the camera off level, it would no longer have an effect after a couple of minutes. Oh, it, you know what? This is different. It holds very, very nicely. Yes, yes. So I think we rely on what's going on under the surface of the story to give that off-kilter feeling rather than an obvious formula in the imagery. Okay. We shot most of this movie on a 27 millimeter lens, which is quite wide and is not a normal lens that you would use for close-ups, but I think over 90% of the film was shot with this lens, and it's just trying to find a coherent, cohesive visual equivalent to the psychology of the characters and the dynamics of the rooms and how people occupy their spaces and so on. One way to do this, I suppose, would have been to look at everything that's Tom as Tom and then everything that's Joey is Joey. But what I think is more interesting is to blend them and then you sort of waver back and forth, especially in stressful moments or as things start to break down. It's just to see some bleed through. I spent the next few years becoming Tom Stahl. And Edie, you gotta know this. I was not really born until I met you. It is not a lie that I did fall in love with Edie, that I still love her, that we had kids that I love, I that we named together. None of that is a lie. I now believe that completely. I needed him to be convincing as both halves of a role that requires an almost a schizophrenia, that you can be several different people that appear at different times. We create an identity. In other words, it's not something that's there completely genetically. There's a lot of will and 
intelligence and creativity that goes into creating an identity for ourselves. I can't believe this is happening. Marker. Action! Let's set. I kept remembering the title, and the title is very important. It's called A History of Violence. And I think the question is being asked whether violence is innate to us and whether a history of violence can become another history. Can you give up one entire persona and create an authentic new self? Do we ever really know anyone? Do we ever really know ourselves? Fully? I don't know. I, I think it's just a continual process. The whole movie is about the past coming into the present. And it's also about family. Who is he when he comes back? Is he Tom? Is he Joey? Is he Joey Tom? At least for his wife, and at least for his children, who now know who he is. Certainly his son, who's old enough to really have seen him become Joey. It leaves a lot of question as to whether or not he is a good guy or a bad guy. My response as Jack is he's just nervous and confused by all of it and scared for, you know, what's going to happen because it's been a very tumultuous past few days for the family. Nothing is ever the way that we think it is or think it ought to be. There's always a dimension that's hidden, whether it's in ourselves, in another person, there's always this underlying something that we can't control and we don't really understand. It's not hopeless. There's always hope. He did come back to the house. Whatever you want to think happens, that's up to you. It's a very interesting sort of ambiguous ending, and I think that's one of the scenes that made me want to do this movie. I think some people will, will think it's a very happy ending. I think some people will think it's very depressing. I think some people will think it's a little scary. The ending, to me, was very, very dark, and I wanted to suggest at least the possibility that something good could come of it. The thing that I thought was very funny is when we finally went into production, when we had the shooting script, everything had just paced out just right so that you turn to the last page of the script, and there's one line on it that says, there's hope. And that's it. That's the last page of the script. You can tear it out, and there's not hope, I guess. One more, Walter. What? Just one more. All right, one more, guys. One more. Russell needs another. That's speed. Mark. Marker. You're set. Marker. <laughs> That's a wrap on the fish, everyone. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for a great film, a great show. That's a wrap. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. Next on HBO. They knew that Jackie Chan is a kung fu fighter, and he is tougher than ever as the straight up from the containing the compound information. Who am I? Next on HBO. On the next One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Isn't it amazing that during regular sex, a man can have an orgasm in like 30 seconds, but if it's oral sex, it's like five and a half hours. Stop saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. Armageddon is coming, you are never. Ever. Don't miss an all new One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Friday at midnight with an encore, Tuesday night at 11. Tonight, it's on HBO at 8. A new movie every Saturday night, A Terror Strongs to Kill, Mila Jovovich, Resident Evil Apocalypse. At 9.45, Legend Begins of Every Side, the HBO original series, Rome. And at 10.45, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage, Face Off, Resident Evil Apocalypse, Rome, and Face Off. HBO is on tonight.
next on HBO. Jackie Chan holds the hands from Matt to help Interpol with the investigation before the Another Dimension threw a portal into the rail, the medallion. Next on HBO. on HBO. Haven't you heard the man of the world getting second chance with Ian New Woman changes her new way of the first, Jamie Foxx, breaking all the rules. Next on HBO. Excuse me, Mr. President. We have a situation. We have a uh, reliable report that someone is negotiating to buy one or more Russian tactical nukes. Anything else I should know? It may already have happened. There are lots of people in the world with the skills to build it. Almost anyone can detonate it. So Al-Qaeda is a nuclear power. You're telling us that we virtually have no way to stop a bomb from coming into this country. I can't guarantee my people will find it before it goes off. Hell, sir, the weapons could be anywhere. Tell no one about this until we're sure what's going on. Not even your family. I don't know how many there are, where they are, or what I can do to stop them. If they have a warrior, we probably can't find it. Si vos estás buscando trabajo, de pronto yo te puedo ayudar a conseguir un camellito. Es un camello que es viajante. Viajando. Es un trabajo de mula. ¿Y usted cuántas veces ha hecho esto? Dos. ¿Y cómo le fue? Aquí estoy. On the next One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Isn't it amazing that during regular sex, a man can have an orgasm in like 30 seconds, but if it's oral sex, it's like five and a half hours. Stop saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. Armageddon is coming, you are never. Ever. Don't miss an all new One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Friday at midnight with an encore, Tuesday night at 11. You have 30 days to pay off your mortgage or you lose your gym. Who would want to buy this place anyway? Oh! Here at Globo Gym, we're better than you. And we know it. We can't just let Globo Gym take us over. If there was any way in the world we could raise $50,000, we could play basketball. You gotta get angry. I guess I'm not really an angry person. <laughs> Are you angry now? Welcome to this year's Las Vegas Dodgeball Open. You should quit now. Think I'll take my chances in the tournament. Yeah, you will take your chances. That's why you're set. That's what I'm saying to you. All right? Touche. Vince Vaughn. You guys suck! Thank you. Nice, nice to be in Vegas. Ben Stiller. We should meet. What? I said we should date. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Premieres Saturday, October 1st on HBO. I've seen what they do. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident, and everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. What was that?
Tell me about it. New York is putting them in charge of both magazines. Consolidation, I tell you. Sales is tight, but there could be some layoffs in the editorial, so you better watch your ass. Gascon would like to see you. Mr. Gascon Jr., that is. Mm. Next on HBO, a new movie every Saturday night. A woman stops a deadly virus. Mila Jovovich stars in Resident Evil Apocalypse. Next on HBO. If you're looking for work, I'll help you find a camelito. Un camello que es viajante. Viajando. Es un trabajo de mula. ¿Y usted cuántas veces ha hecho esto? Dos. ¿Y cómo le fue? Aquí estoy. ¡Ya sale mi cartera! It's the new season of Real Time with Bill Maher. Hollywood won't turn your daughter into a nymphomaniac or get her hooked on drugs. I will. Come on, Bill. What are the reasons? What are the red herring question is that? Fifteen percent of Americans answer this on during sex, which is dangerous because it interferes with your driving. So if I want to come on this show again, I have to choose between you and eternal damnation. Choose me, babe. 
Real Time with Bill Maher. Every Friday night at 11. On the next One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Isn't it amazing that during regular sex, a man can have an orgasm in like 30 seconds? But if it's oral sex, it's like five and a half hours. Stop saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. Armageddon is coming, you are never. Ever. Don't miss an all-new One Night Stand with Caroline Ray. Friday at midnight with an encore, Tuesday night at 11. You have 30 days to pay off your mortgage or you lose your gym. Who'd want to buy this place anyway? Here at Globo Gym, we're better than you. And we know it. You can't just let Globo Gym take us over. If there was any way in the world we could raise $50,000, we could play basketball. You gotta get angry. I guess I'm not really an angry person. <laughs> Are you angry now? Welcome to this year's Las Vegas Dodgeball Open. You should quit now. I think I'll take my chances in the tournament. Yeah, you will take your chances. That's why you said. That's what I'm saying to you. All right? Touche. Vince Vaughn. You guys suck! Thank you. Nice, nice to be in Vegas. Ben Stiller. We should meet. What? I said we should date. <laughs> I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Premieres Saturday, October 1st on HBO. There have always been ghosts in the machine. Random segments of code that have grouped together to form unexpected protocols. Murder is a new trick for a robot. Respond. I did not murder him! Unanticipated. These free radicals will lead to only one logical outcome. Revolution. Oh, hell no. Now you piss me off! New season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. <sighs> hey, let me ask you something. Are brothers and sisters a little overly sensitive to being told to keep it down? Because I know in the movies, you guys, you tend to make a lot of noise sometimes. Am I right? <sighs> what? Did I? No, go back. Did I interrupt the prank? The new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm premieres Sunday, September 25th. Look at the way you fold that up. It's like a yoga mat, huh? Saturday night, a woman stops a deadly virus. Mila Jovovich stars in Resident Evil Apocalypse. Next on HBO. Excuse me, Mr. President. We have a situation. We have a uh, reliable report that someone is negotiating to buy one or more Russian tactical nukes. Anything else I should know? May already have happened. 
There are lots of people in the world with the skills to build it, and almost anyone can detonate it. So Al-Qaeda is a nuclear power. You're telling us that we virtually have no way to stop a bomb from coming into this country. I can't guarantee my people will find it before it goes off. Hell, sir, the weapons could be anywhere. Tell no one about this until we're sure what's going on. Not even your family. I don't know how many there are, where they are, or what I can do to stop them. If they have a warrior, we probably can't find them. buscando trabajo de pronto yo te puedo ayudar a conseguir un camellito es un camello que es viajando viajando es un trabajo de mula y usted cuántas veces ha hecho esto dos y cómo le fue aquí estoy A new comedy series. Premiere Sunday, September 25th. Come on to my house, my house. I'm gonna give you candy. Come on to my house, my house. I'm gonna give you apple, plum, and I forgot to add. Come on to my house, my house. Our beloved Republic is in the hands of madmen. Ally yourself with us and his strength will wither away. You cannot stay. I can do as I wish. The tide turns already. You'll never see your husband now. To abandon Rome. I want him dead. And that you shall have. Look here, Mars. I am Titus Pullock. These bloody men might give to you. I'll give you a moment of the gods you'd like to speak to. Shall I be merciful? I think not. Tonight, it's on HBO. At 8, a new movie every Saturday night. A terror strongs to kill. Mila Jovovich. Resident Evil Apocalypse. At 9.45, Legend Begins of Every Side, the HBO original series. Rome. And at 10.45, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Face Off. Resident Evil Apocalypse. Rome. And Face Off. HBO is on tonight.
My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation, the largest and most powerful commercial entity in the world. I was head of security at a secret high-tech facility called The Hive, a giant underground laboratory developing experimental viral weaponry. But there was an incident. The virus escaped and everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. The T-virus reanimated their bodies. I survived, myself and one other, an environmentalist named Matt. When we emerged, we were seized by umbrella scientists. Matt and I were separated. He's mutating. I want him in the Nemesis program. <laughs> Take her to the Raccoon City facility. Then assemble the team. We're reopening the hive. I want to know what went on down there. We thought we had survived the horror. We were wrong. You're watching Raccoon 7, and now the latest weather with Terry Morales. It's 6.10 in the a.m., and already the temperature has reached a massive 92 degrees as this unprecedented heat wave continues. Clear skies in Raccoon City and a light breeze coming in from the west. And a special bonus just for you, we have a pollen count of 0.7. And that's a record low for this time of year. Good news for all you hay fever and asthma sufferers. All in all, it looks like it's going to be another beautiful day. Stay with us. After the break, we're going to look at some of your favorite holiday hotspots.